yeah, you will. You'll provoke twice. You'll take two two attacks of okay. opportunity. You can also shoot them okay. point blank. You won't provoke an attack of opportunity if you shoot point blank. You'll just be shooting with disadvantage. So you'll roll twice, take and the that's lowest roll. Two, or what is that? No, that's roll twice, take the lowest. Okay, but what if I am inspired by seeing the father go down? How does that does that negate the disadvantage? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. No, not in this case because you you have Damn. two. Yeah, <laughs> that was a nice try though. That, that was that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> that was a, that was a nice try. All right, all right. You're all just right. too drunk, Paul. So if you want to if you want to attack right, so one of these. So my options here. Can, oh, so, go ahead. Okay, so if I want to attack one of them, I can I switch. Uh, weapons or sure, what are absolutely. the rules on that? Yeah, it's part of your switching weapons or it doesn't even cost a, a, an action anymore. It's just part of your movement. So you can pull out your, your short sword. I know you got a short sword. So you can pull out your short sword and you know an attack with the short <laughs> and sword. And not hit with it. <laughs> no, you do. You hit it. You hit seven plus no, six. You <laughs> hit. Yeah, you hit you hit cobalt number four, yeah. All right. And you and killed him. Down. Yeah, nice. you, you <laughs> took the you took the cobalt out, yeah. Very nice. So you didn't even need to negotiate yeah. with the DM. Look at that. I know. But, you know, it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know your options. All right. So let's go to, uh, if you want to, well, you, you can still take movement. You can, like, kind of run around this guy as much as you want. You just can't leave his space. I do his, now, his yes. space. Yeah, you okay, just can't leave his reach. Okay, I want to protect the children. Okay. So Look you, at okay. me protecting the children. I or like here, that. I'm even protect them Ooh. that way. There we go. Between, oh, I like that. Nice. All right. So yeah, you get you get positioned over there, and it uh, looks like the the she children really are starting to, yeah, the children are falling <laughs> back. Look at almost lawful good. <laughs> the children she's definitely get falling back. She drinks. They're running from me. They're like, oh, she smells. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, lady. You hear one of them say, "Thanks, lady. You're the best." <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, to Vane. You're up now. All right. Um, I want to attack cultist number two. Okay. So um, you were saying something about there being a penalty for using the uh, point blank Correct. Longbow, yeah, yeah your bow. Yep, yep. You would get a, a, a penalty, and it would be disadvantaged. So if you want to attack with your bow on cultist number two, uh, in the very bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see the DIS button. And you'll just click it, it'll light up red, and then that's when you would just do your attack. And then it'll roll twice and take the uh, take the worst roll. Very nice. Even with disadvantage, Absolutely. you still hit. Yeah, you still hit. So you can go ahead and get... Uh, you can have sneak attack because you have uh, Dweedle Toes. He's there. So you can take your sneak Sweet. attack pendant, put it on top of you, and then attack. And I, I fixed your your I, sneak I attack damage, your... so you're only doing 1d6 now. So. Was that like a direct shot to the eye there? It, it was. Wherever you want it to hit. There you go. So you take the cultist yeah. out. Yeah, max nice. damage, sneak attack damage is minimal, but the cultist goes down. Cultist number two. Sweet. Nice job. All right, you can take movement too. So you can go ahead and move up to your movement, and we'll go to uh, we'll go to Dweedletoes as you do your movement if you want to do any at all. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, good. No. right there. So I'm going to um, I'm going to cast Spare the Dying on uh, Linen. Beautiful cantrip, love it. All right, j just to uh, just to keep her from from dying on us here, and I think that's all I can do really. I mean, I can move, but that's probably just gonna prov provoke an attack of opportunity. So I guess I'll just stay put. Yeah, it, it's casting spare the nine. It, it doesn't it doesn't provoke. So uh, yeah, you get the you know you say your your words from your deity and you spare her. So basically, she's at zero hit points, and but doesn't have to make saving throws anymore. Now Cuth, on the other hand, he'll need to, but. Good job with that. Spare the dying. A lot of people, a lot of clerics forget to to use that. But good job though, John. Yeah. So I I take my I take my holy symbol, which is made up of coins, and it has one big coin for uh, Timora Lady Luck, and I just kiss that and then push it to her forehead. And I go, Timora will grant you one more chance. Nice. Orgo, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and go, and if you'd like to move, you can go ahead and move, but you take the attack though, uh, Tweedle. But Orgo, you're up. You got this last cultist down here. Looks like All the, right, the tide cultist. has turned. No. 
It has. I I feel I feel lucky. I feel almost inspired. Oh. Uh, maybe, <laughs> That's how you really feel. Maybe maybe I should pick up the axe and put down the spells Ooh. more often. It feels good to have a battle axe. The weight. Oh, can I take advantage? Can I use the inspiration on this guy? Absolutely, I yeah. That's my last opportunity. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, Ooh, but you, your inspiration oh, yeah, really. Oh, it just wasn't yeah, enough. You avoided a natural one. That's very <laughs> true. That is a small prize. All right, Maybe so I should put the axe back down. We are to the top. You know, inspiration. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead, Chris. Every dwarf has an axe fail. Once in a while, it's, it's it happens to every dwarf. Yeah, it does. Just, yeah. You lose a few toes, it's fine. <laughs> I thought you were going to pick up your portable anvil and smash it on his head from behind. <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Next Orgo, time, you can you can join the ladies' night for some meat later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, gra I'll grant I'll you some luck. <laughs> All right, so we're to the top of the round, and the archers basically take all the last couple cultists that you guys are engaged with. Almost hitting you several times. So the combat is over. Say, hey, we're working here. <laughs> you guys are out of combat. Uh, and you have Cuth. He is he is unconscious. And you can still, you know, all around you, it seems like there are more and more of these uh, individuals, I guess we'll, we'll just call them individuals, more and more of these, <laughs> of these robed figures, more and more of these giant lizards. Uh, you can actually see that there is a very huge, probably seven foot tall, it looks like a dragonborn, but then again, as you kind of look at it a little bit more, it is not a dragonborn. It's some kind of walking half dragon man or something. And then you can see tons of kobolds, and it looks like now they're, they're starting to surround the keep. They're still on the other side of the river from where you're at, well, the stream, but you guys still have enough time to get Cuff up, get him, uh, you get him stabilized, you get another spare of the dying in there, Dweedle yeah, that's, that's the first thing I'm going to do is stabilize him. Yeah, I figured you probably would. So you get that done, you you know, you know, get uh, him to his feet, you get Lennon to her feet, and you get up to the castle. And when you get up to the castle you can see that they're now starting to take the you know the portcullis and the portcullis is starting to go down and you guys barely make it in time you guys barely make it into the keep as the portcullis shuts down so you guys are safely within greenest the sensor keep Woo! all right we did it <laughs> we saved these kids and the mom and dad didn't perish despite their foolishness Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they charge into battle with like a, one had a statue and the other had like a, some broken implement or something. I don't know <laughs> yeah, what they're yeah, thinking. Yeah. They, they, they should have stayed down the they had what, yeah. well, well, clearly they aren't dragon slayers like you. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. They didn't plan their clearly. eating properly. But it's the only weapon that I could find to help assist with killing all of these kobolds. If I would have had a sword, I would have attacked with a sword, sir. Well, there were all those weapons of the dead things that we killed that you could have used. But... No, <laughs> they only had ornaments on them. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from originally? That's a very unique accent. Do you perhaps hail from the Dalens? Silence. Are you talking to me? <laughs> oh, no. Who are you oh, talking to? With you, right, Amber? Oh, I thought that was Cuff talking earlier. Yes, it is. Uh, from the Dalens? No, I'm... I, I'm not from the Dalens. No, he goes, no, I'm not from the Dalens. As his voice changes about two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> There's that accent. Are you sure that you're from around? I am not from not the so Dalens. <laughs> uh, usually, all of my my voices will end up sounding Spanish by the end, anyway. So, <laughs> all of them do. <laughs> So you guys are in the the safety of the keep, and you can see that you know the, there's actually quite a few guards in here. There's there's a couple dozen guards. Uh, they get the portcullis. Um, they get the portcullis down. Uh, the gate has now come down, and it looks like uh, there's uh, several guards coming up to you with an with an individual that is uh, pretty much dressed. I don't want to say like royalty. But he, he comes up to you and, and introduces himself as as Governor Nighthill. 
and this is what uh, Governor Night Hill looks like. He is, uh, you Watch know, out, and you can also control. see, yes, exactly. <laughs> he has a, he's five. actually got his arm in a cast, so it looks like that he's actually been wounded. And he introduces himself to Governor Nighthill. He has a, a very scraggly red-haired dwarf. No offense. No offense at all to uh, Amber there. But <laughs> oh, uh, he introduces himself as... These are sideburns. Oh, my goodness. He introduces himself <laughs> as... Hello, my name is Escobet the Red. And I am the, the defense minister here of the Keep. And he says, uh, well, I've never seen you here in, in Greenest before. Uh, uh, what brings you here? We didn't know if, if you were part of the of this attack, if part of these uh, robed cultists or part of the kobolds. So I withheld uh, launching any any arrows at you. But when we had seen you killing the robed figures and the and all of the kobolds down below, that's when we decided to help you. And I'm sorry we didn't help you sooner, but we just didn't know what side you were on. We killed a lot of individuals and dragon lords. Dragon lords. We came from the what I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Ah, a caravan. Ah, a caravan that a caravan is a. Uh, we are not individuals. Was it supposed to come here to the greenest? We have many caravans. Not this is not a good time though. I'm gonna admit, uh, my friends, now is not a good time to have the caravan come through. But uh, we have many. Can you tell us who's attacking you guys? Uh, we we honestly have uh, no clue. We have a visitor though from from Candlekeep. His his name is Leason. He is uh, one of the spiritualists. He's he's quite a quite an intelligent uh, individual. But uh, he is uh, another individual. Thinks he might have a little bit of information on us that this might be a cult, <laughs> a cult of some type of uh, worshippers of dragons. People. <laughs> yes, exactly. These people, they could be worshipping dragons. I mean, there's a dragon outside attacking the castle as well. As you can see, the, the roof of uh, of the, the mage spider here, the tower is on fire. Ah, lots going on around here. Is the dragon still here. circling through here? Uh, the dragon has actually kind of disappeared for the time being. You, you missed your okay. chance, buddy. No, ah, you chased <laughs> it off. Yeah, I'll have to wait till another... Another uh, chance comes. Well, around. we've been a been, we've been right. being attacked for I'd say about four to five hours now, and uh, the dragon comes and goes, and it, it's done that about uh, three times now. So hopefully the dragon won't come back now that it is night. Hopefully it's tired and wants to get some sleep. <laughs> Dweedletoes goes running off and climbs up, and I want to be up top with my uh, an arrow. Ready to ready to fire upon the dragon if it comes back. I, I just go running off. I don't even talk to him anymore. I go. I shall go find slay the dragon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so as you as you climb up, uh, you know you climb up the the ramparts, and you're you know you're kind of they're kind of the ramparts are kind of tall for you, but you find a crate that you can stand on, and you're able to see. But what you see, you don't see the dragon. What you see is like a, a massive skirmish line that's starting to form around the keep. And it looks like it's a it's a massive mix of of these robed individuals again. Well, now you know that they're cultists. You can see that there are a lot of uh, kobolds that are now involved. You can also see several other individuals that are wearing purple robes. Several of these individuals wearing purple robes, and then you also see a a very tall, like I was saying, a very tall sort of like. Dragonborn, but not a dragonborn. He's like a like a half dragon, and he's m wielding a massive two-handed scythe. So it I, is. I, ye I yell down to the group. I go, "You might want to get up here." I go, "There's a bunch of of uh, dragon lords. There's a, a, a slew of individuals, and there's a uh, <laughs> there's there's some dragon lord lords, and I think there might even be some purple dragons from Cormir up here." Maybe they're coming to help. So Escobar, he starts <laughs> to yeah. That seems likely. Escobar, he starts he to take all the head of the... on the way in. Or... <laughs> 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 no, I just, I've been part, partaking in the dwarven mead this whole journey. Yes, partake. Maybe some, maybe some dwarf mushrooms as well. Ooh, <laughs> yes. ooh, no, no, there's, underdark there's mushrooms, Chris. Yeah, we keep that the under good the good ones. There. Well, Minister, uh, we're. Where could we be of the most use to you? As you see, we have fighting skills 
So how do I help the town? I see that, and and I am uh, very grateful for that, and and I appreciate uh, you coming from the caravan. Uh, I have people out there, not only my guards, but other individuals that live here in Greenest. It's obviously uh, apparent that they're going for uh, some... They're looting everything. They have not really been uh, concentrating their attacks and their efforts on the castle for the time being. But obviously, according to the halfling, it seems like uh, their plans could be changing. So, uh, I I will... uh, I would need to have some help if, if you wouldn't mind. I am, I am wounded. Uh, I am, I have just enough men here at the keep to uh, man the ramparts and, and kind of back these things down a little bit. Uh, we do have a, a secret tunnel that is under the castle, and we use that secret tunnel to go to and forth to other sections of Greenest, and it is unknown. It has not been compromised yet, and if you could use that tunnel to help out our citizens in our cathedral on the eastern side of town, I would be most grateful. See, this is Wait. why humans cannot yes. be trusted. There are secrets and secrets and secrets. Secret tunnel yeah. fighting. Yeah, Love yeah. Dwarves fighting. have never built a secret tunnel ever. Mm. No, no <laughs> never. <laughs> Escobert the Red, he says, ah, but... Every dwarf knows about it. But I believe that the tunnel was built by dwarves. He seems actually pretty excited well, about it. Oh, it is it is dwarvish architecture down below. <laughs> oh, well, then if you said that, let's go. Aye, and we will. Really, have a plan. Now. <laughs> All right. All right, we, we will take to the tunnel, and we will uh, see if we can help out your people in the cathedral. Well, I appreciate well, I, that, like, Elf. I can't speak for everyone. Well, I appreciate that, Elf. And, and what is your yes. name, Elf? I am, uh, my name is Nightill. Just call me, don't, please, do, do not call me. I, I don't want the title governor. Just call me Nightill. All right, Nightill. Nice to meet you. My name is Kinrick. Uh, and who are the others here? A uh, couple stout I'm... dwarves, I see. Yes, I'm I am Orville. Amber of Clan Battlehammer. Oh, the Battlehammer Clan of the North! I've heard of them! Aye. Aye, you have. Ah, uh, good fighters! Good fighters, I, I remember the stories of uh, the wars with the orcs. Terrible, terrible times with the clan, though, at one point. Tragic, tragic. Do not remind me. I will take to the drink. Aye, and we have plenty of drink when this is all said and done, my friends. Aye, aye. <laughs> is the, is the, the orc your, your husband? or You guys kind of look alike. <laughs> He is now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very oh, nice. Man. You spoke the words. I mean. <laughs> All right, so it, it's a little bit past twelve. I don't want to keep you guys uh, any later. So thank you guys. We this is a great stopping point. You guys will enter the tunnels next session, and then we will go from there. So I hope you guys. Uh, hope Woo! you guys enjoyed playing. Bye. I had a great time. Thank you guys so much for playing. It was a blast. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much yeah, for thank winning. You, thank you. And thanks Good for time. watching, peoples. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for, next time for we watching. Shall have some beverage endorse- endorsements. <laughs> Dude, that would be awesome. <laughs> we that have a priority. Great. We'll keep drinking till we get some. I'll have to get yes, some we Killians. <laughs> well, there's going to be a wedding, so we need to drink. Oh, <laughs> oh that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Dirk and the dwarf. Uh, yeah, a, yeah. a Thunderhammer <laughs> wedding, yeah. I, I, I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. But good job, everybody. Great job. Nice. And uh, if you guys need any help, I think we're next time we're meeting is in is in January. So uh, if I don't uh, speak to you guys again, I hope you guys have hop- happy holidays and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys uh, for next session next month. And if you guys have any questions next at year. all, yeah, right. feel free to drop me an email. You guys have me an email if you have any questions at all. And also, you guys are this now level great. two. Great. You guys are congratulations. Oh, wow. Level two as well. Level, so. all right. level up. Now I could be, able, I could yeah. be a real blade singer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yay. So if Some you guys want to. will be a real boy. 
<laughs> if you guys want to let me know what you want for level two, I'll go ahead and I'll update your character sheets for you so you won't have to do that. So, like, Jonathan, you tell me what second level stuff you want. You know, Chris, you would do the same, Wolfgang, everybody. So, and uh, in fact, I'll contact all of you guys individually uh, when I get to probably sometime next week or so when I level up your characters. And then I'll, I'll just help each one of you guys level them up individually. And it'll be, you guys will come back as level two, uh, some more hit points and some more goodies to play with. So, but thanks for playing. Now, everybody. are we coming back to this scenario? Yeah, we are. We are for sure. Yep, absolutely. But even when we continue on, you guys are going to be level two. So. We're going to have some fun. We're going to okay. time warp all around the place.